Hello and welcome to Small Town Big Business, a podcast about doing business in small towns across the Midwest. I'm your host, Allison Hassler with Southern Illinois Vacation Rentals. And I'm Russell Williams, Director of Ethos Co-working Spaces and Small Business Incubator. Welcome. You are at the Citadel Building in downtown Marion, Illinois. We're so glad that you joined us today for Small Town Big Business. We also want to thank our sponsors for making this possible. We want to thank uh, Fowler Heating and Cooling, the Arcadia Wealth Group, um, Black Diamond Harley Davidson and RV, um, the Watermark Auto Group Foundation, of course Swinford Media Group, and also Union Street Arts. And as always, you can subscribe to the Small Town Big Business Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And remember, subscribing is free and you won't miss a new episode that is released every two weeks. If you want to know more about the Small Town Big Business Podcast or Ethos Co-working Spaces and Small Business Incubator, you can contact me at russell at watermarkethos.org or you can find us on Facebook at Ethos at the Citadel on Tower Square Plaza. And if you are new to our podcast, we interview successful business owners that are thriving in small towns just to understand what it is that makes them thrive. And today, our special guests are Bill Swinford and Riley Swinford from Swinford Media Group. They did come out, Swinford did come out (laughs) correctly the second time, or the third time. That's a Swinford Media Group. You guys are neighbors right across the square here. That's right. We, we enjoy looking across the square and seeing what's going on here at the Citadel building every day. And we know there's something important happening up here. And, yeah. And uh, we admire what you do. And you guys literally got in the ground floor here on yeah. the podcast. You guys helped us get this started. Yeah. And one of our big sponsors. Thank you so much for doing that. Well, thank yeah. you. Thanks for all you do because you represent this community very well as well as the people that you have on. And, and we're just very impressed and privileged that you invited us to join you today. Yeah. Thank thanks you. for doing that. So I gotta ask, how long have you had Swin Swinford Media Group? <laughs> I gotta admit, I rolls off the tongue. Sir does that. Swinford Media Group, and how long have you had the Marion Star? So, and what all encompasses the Swinford the Media Group? Yeah, yes, the enterprises. So. I want to hear what all is in that umbrella, and then we'll go back to how it all started. Yeah, so Swinford Media Group as itself is only about probably three, almost four years old, but the Marion Star is close to eight years old. So we started the Marion Star with our old business partner um, when we first kind of got into this. Uh, my dad was partners with this guy, his name's Jerry Reppert, and he was doing the Heron and Carterville newspapers at that time. And when I graduated SIU in 2014, um, I came to them and kind of had this vision of kind of joining that group and getting the Marion Star going and giving Marion a new weekly newspaper and kind of breathing some new life into that industry here in town. And so we got the Star started at that time, um, kind of ran that alongside those two guys for a couple of years and then we branched off and bought it out from him and uh, kind of expanded from there in the last three years since Swinford Media Group got established. Okay. And I, and I, uh, I've worked in the newspaper business in and around Marion for off and on for 30 years, 35 years. And um, so in all that time, I worked for a number of different corporations who own some of our local newspapers and, and never had worked for a, a family owned business before Jerry Reppert and I uh, went into business together. Reppert Publications is based in Anna mm-hmm. and it's family owned business. And it started to give me a, you know, a vision for what what our future might be because I knew Riley uh, Riley got into this field at 10 years old and uh, delivering delivering the newspapers the old Mary Daily Republican where I uh, where I worked and uh, so I worked with him even at that level and then he as he got older he became a writer as a teenager covered some sports for us over there went to journalism school um, was accomplished there came back worked with us and uh, the whole time I had the seed of potentially creating our own family business if that's something that he really wanted to do and thankfully it led to that and, and now instead of being tied to a corporation that's based in Chicago or New York or something like that we get to make the local decisions here and that's, yeah. that's huge for us. Riley did you know you were being groomed for this <laughs> business? Yeah people always say like did you have ink in your blood just because of that you know being my parents background and I guess so I guess there was no way around it. I mean, even he said 10 years old, even before that I was 
as early as I can remember sitting in newsrooms on Friday nights, um, you know, when he would cover a, a game or a, a meeting or something like that, I'd ride along and check it out and spend some time, you know, fooling around on the computer, even at that age, uh, making a, a little kid newsletter and newspaper of my own. And so, uh, I didn't really have a choice, I guess, but uh, I wouldn't have it any other way I, at this point. It's it's been great, and you know, with Jerry Repper and his experience, along with you know his years of experience, you know, to be as young as I am to have those kind of mentors, um, it's been really good to get started that way. When Riley was delivering newspapers, he was like I said, 10, 11 years old. He started creating the Riley Report, and he would just slyly insert that <laughs> into those papers, yeah, and, like and all all of his subscribers would get a copy. <laughs> of the Riley Report, <laughs> maybe once a month or so, but a full update on everything. Fox News didn't pick that up. Huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, and a full re full report on what he was doing, sometimes what we were doing, sometimes we needed to take a look at it before he <laughs> put the family news out yeah. out to the world. But um, That's great. it was uh, it was his first, uh, yeah, like he said, some of his first occasions. to. And in some cases, it's kind of crazy. There's still some of the same customers you know, oh, the, really? are now Marion Star Riley subscribers course. that I mm -hmm. used to deliver that to back in the day. So it's kind of came full circle. So they had the Riley Report when you were 10, and yeah. now they're seeing the journalism the that you do now. Products, and yeah. that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, 20 years of progress, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So our group, our group encompasses the Marion Star mm -hmm. and the Heron Independent, which is a similar paper for Heron, and the Carterville Courier is, yeah. is, our, is our group. And then as, as and you do some live. Yeah, and as we've gone along, we have um, realized the the opportunity. A lot of this having to do with the with the folks that we have. Riley has a has a has a talent for not just writing and, and editing, and he's he's our editor of all three of the papers, but he has a talent for being on air, and and so we have started to do more and more um, video casting and. And tell them, tell them a little bit about that. Yeah, so like when I was going to journalism school, two thousand ten to two thousand fourteen, obviously at that point. The writing was on the wall that black and white newspaper ink and, and paper wasn't always going to be the trend and you know even as early as twitter and and um, facebook and things like that were kind of starting to make their way into the mainstream at that time um, they made all of us go through digital media training because they could kind of see how the world was evolving so when i came to work with him um, kind of news to these older guys that had been in it. I said, hey, we got to start adding some of this other kinds of stuff to what we do. Otherwise, you know, by the time he retires, he might be okay. But if I'm going to make it in this field for another 25 or 30 years, I'm going to have to, you know, kind of pivot and evolve and, and change as the years go along. So probably starting around the time we established Swinford Media Group um, as our own, we started offering digital live streaming. Um, we've done events, we've done graduations. We've done breaking news, uh, city meetings, um, and a lot of probably what we're known best for, high school sports and uh, live streams of football games, basketball games, all those kinds of things um, that have gotten really popular. And we were kind of ahead of the curve before COVID you know, came. We had done it for a school year, and then we didn't have any idea how important that was going to be as the world shut down and spectators were limited and that kind of thing at sports to allow these families and fans to see their kids play. Yeah. So um, that's kind of not really kind of taken over our business, but it's really a nice, you know, maybe one B for what we do now in terms of a revenue generator, obviously, but um, obviously giving us something new and fun and exciting to work on at the same time. Yeah. And right around the time that, that, that COVID hit, we were doing more and more of this. Rachel Stroud, who works for us, who was hired in marketing and, and still oversees our marketing, uh, turned out to be a great camera presence as well. We had a couple of other young people that worked with us off and on that, that also had talent in that. And we had a, a, a gentleman by the name of Luke O'Neill. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I've heard of him. Uh, yes. I've heard of him, Now yeah. of Union Street Arts, who, who was, uh, was very generous to us in, in lending his, his talents to us and his abilities to us, taught us a lot of things. And he also um, was encouraging. I can remember a phone call that I had, and this is like right on the edge of the COVID shutdown. I mean, right before we knew what was going to happen, where he was encouraging us to do more and more of these things, almost to the point of uh, a daily kind of a newscast. That um, as soon as as soon as the shutdown hit, we, in in connection with our city government and and others got even more encouragement just to kind of be a communication arm, another communication arm, along with some of the things that, that you were doing and, and the city yeah. was doing 
uh, to get the word out about uh, about you know what folks needed to know. So we kind of turned into a daily newscast there for a while called the Marion Star Live, yeah. and those are things we still do on occasion, but yeah. but not as not as urgent uh, a need to to communicate right now. We're, mm-hmm. we're falling back into more of that small town pace that we uh, yeah. that we like so much. But you do have the email that comes out frequently. Yeah, we we do email updates to our subscribers mm-hmm. yeah. and, and uh, a lot of little things like that that just try to keep that communication, that connection going in our community. We think that's folks folks thank us all the time for what we do and all we're yeah. really doing is just communicating all the great things that other people are doing. Yeah. And we're just we're just making sure that that the word gets out about that's it. That's great. I think it's really great that you guys made it a priority to step out and be a family-owned business to represent the small towns that are in this area. Uh, Just for those that aren't familiar with the media groups, how many newspapers um, on the whole are still family-owned in the region and the state and the nationally, um, just to understand where, you know, how you are represented? Well, you know, it, it, there are so few of us, and and thankfully there are a few others sprinkled around the country that operate like we do. Folks, you know, folks. I mean, you can read newspaper articles. <laughs> you can read articles online about how the newspaper business is going under. It's, it's not going to last. Uh, and and we've seen that. We've seen papers, you know, major papers closing or oh, or yeah. definitely cutting back and drastically cutting back their operations and their staffing. And so, of course, anybody that cares about us cares about our future. Mm-hmm. And what we tell them is that, you know, operated the right way, whether family owned or corporately owned, operated the right way in a small town, that there is still a, there's still a place for us. Mm-hmm. But, but the focus needs to be on sharing the news they're not getting anywhere else. Mm-hmm. If, we, if all you're doing is, is, and this is the experience that I've had working for papers that were corporately owned, they, they, um, um, they end up just being so full of, of wire stories and other things mm-hmm. that you can find on your phones now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I came out of that at a time when, when that was just starting to happen. Now, mm-hmm. um, there's just no need for somebody to be putting out a newspaper full of Associated Press stories when that, yeah. that's, that's instantly accessible to people. So what we do is we try to give you the things nobody else is going to get you. Features on the folks that aren't being yeah. celebrated anywhere else and, and digging into and, and still Doing the, the accountability with the with the local government and things that that we need to do that's that's our journalistic um, requirement to do is to go in and 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 hold hold local government accountable, uh, make sure the taxpayers are being treated fairly, uh, but at the same time our biggest focus is on just celebrating those those little stories that people people love and and yeah. if you can do that, um, of course you got to have the community support to mm-hmm. that they you know they show that they want to do that but if you can do that then you can stay in business. And I'm yeah. convinced that that can continue for a long time. Yeah. So how has your business model and funding streams that you mentioned was changing when you were in school, how has that changed from a traditional way that newspaper has been run to what you guys are doing today? Yeah, I think, you know, when I first got into it, I kind of saw the tail end of people that wanted to place event ads, people that wanted to place a lot of classifieds. But in this day and age, you know, with Facebook and Facebook Marketplace and and groups like that, you know, we just know that it's not as popular to get the word out through the newspaper. And in fact, in a lot of ways, I'll tell people that maybe we're not the best way to get the word out over some things because through a couple of clicks and a push of a button, you can blast it to an audience a lot more quick than, than we can wait till the press gets fired up next Thursday. So um, that's definitely changed. The news cycle has definitely changed. We kind of have to go through more evergreen type stories that, you know, being a weekly paper, you know, if something's going to happen, you know, that night at six o'clock, that's going to be a week old in some cases by the time someone sees it. So we've got to kind of change our thought process with that. And and the revenue stream is more finding partners to come alongside us, finding people in the community. Um, Watermark's been a huge one for us with that, that will just stamp, you know, their name on things to not only help their marketing department, but just show the community that they're behind what we do. And so it's less about, you know, people selling items here and there and putting ads in for events. And, and we'll definitely still work with those people from time to time, but we, we have to find community sponsors that will just get behind our live streams, get behind our newspaper and, you know, help support what we do because they believe in the vision and, and want to put their name on 
you know, what we're doing and endorse the kind of good stories that we're putting out there and, right. and the sports that we're covering and things like that. Yeah, we, we try to, you know, we try to, of course, always make people aware of the value of, of hometown news and a hometown news source and understanding that, yes, you might be able to find out a lot of information on social media and, and yes, all the way down to the neighborhood group that I'm a part of on Facebook that tells me, you know, that somebody's dog is running running loose. Okay, that's mm -hmm. that's obviously valuable mm -hmm. and on that level. But at the same time, if the only information you're getting or the only way you're getting information about what's going on with the school district or coming out of the you know, changes that are being made or through the city, if that's just filtering through folks that that um, are it's either it's either hearsay or they're not they're not trained in in the journalistic style and, the, and in the in the journalistic integrity of, mm -hmm. of digging down to the truth. Um, we just have to continue to, to remind folks that there still needs to be a place, still needs to be a a, um, a value to having a trained journalist working in your community mm -hmm. and and working on those working those stories and and getting them to you as soon as they're ready ready to be shared. Yeah, in this day and age, especially in the social media world we live in, everyone's got an agenda. Everyone's pushing whatever thing they're trying to push to, um, you know, sway the news this way or that way to get you to believe the way that they believe. And so we've kind of prided ourselves in just floating right down the middle and not taking really any sides, not trying to lean left, not trying to lean right, not trying to, you know, push one thing or another, but just giving people, you know, an unfiltered or a, I guess an unbiased view of, mm -hmm. of the news that we're putting out there. And people really compliment us on that because uh, everything's became so polarized in this yeah. day and age with politics and the pandemic and everything that instead of, you know, making sure we only report this news because it benefits this side or that side, We'll tell you all sides of it, and we'll let you know the reader decide, you know, how they want to take it from there. But we're not necessarily out trying to influence the community one way or another. We're just taking the news that we receive or that we find out, and, and telling it in the most professional way possible, and, and letting the, the reader decide. Yeah, you know, my my 13 year old has a course that she takes in homeschool, and it is about really developing discernment. And the, and the book is Facts and Fallacies, and it really does go through um, understanding that journalism can be very polarizing. And I think that that's really interesting that, you know, you, the integrity is there and being a, a family owned business that you guys really do want to find that middle ground and getting to the truth. And that's, that's something that we've, we've practiced in our, our home that we, we practice understanding that um, you know if something is very biased how to read that and how to understand what words are going to be used or what tone is going to be used in the in the journalistic approach and um, and I don't see that when I read read articles from you and I really do appreciate that that it's um, that you are very fair and honest um, you know it may not be something that the population really likes is you know what's going on but you you do a great job with that and I I do appreciate it because it's well, yeah. not very often that you see it, especially yeah. as the bigger news stories get. Thank you. Yeah, and when we talk about professional journalism, it really doesn't help us that that some of the bigger names in journalism are just so slanted, you know, in one direction or another, and so obviously sl supported by the right or, or the left. Um, and so they, you know, folks understandably tend to kind of throw us all into the same pot, and all we can do is just keep, you know, just keep sharing. We don't. We try not to block anybody's point of view out. Um, we try to provide a platform for everybody to share, but we're not going to tell you what to think about it. Um, um, rarely. Uh, every, now, every, every now and then I might write a, write a column to stand, stand well, and, up for one thing or another. And, and so, sure. In some cases, with us just being a weekly paper, you know, that space is limited in, in the black and white. We have a website and we have Facebook, but, I mean, we can't cover everything. So in some cases it's better to just let some stuff just go and mm -hmm. just, you know, sit back and figure yeah. out, you know, in the in the town of Marion, in the town of Heron, in the town of Carterville, is this really worth devoting space to? Or is there other things that have more important, you know, priority right now? Mm -hmm. And I, I could tell them my, my new motto that I yeah. that I kinda live by that I told him the other day. And it's it's really funny, but it's it's the truest thing I've heard in a long time. I, a page I follow on Twitter 
put out this post that said, if Nelly tells you it's getting hot, don't immediately take off all your clothes. Your job as a journalist is to then, in fact, find out, is it actually getting hot before you take off all your clothes? Yeah. And I mean, I think that's the silliest way to explain it, but I really believe that that's the best way to explain it yeah. is, you know, instead of just immediately in this world we live in, if you see a post, you know, if Nellie's reporting, it's getting hot in here, instead of just immediately going and taking off all your clothes, our job is to do the research and let people know, yeah. indeed, it is hot. It's 95 degrees. <laughs> here's, all, here's, all the, here's all the reasons. It's up that, to you yeah. whether you want to undress or not. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's, the, it's the silliest example right now, but I, I, that really just spoke to me is like at the the rawest form, that's what we're doing. And that's how v people need to view what we're doing and, mm -hmm. and that we're just putting it out there and letting people decide. Yeah. But I bet you both have had opportunities to go somewhere else, to go to a bigger city, to go to a bigger newspaper yeah. or other media outlet and, and be paid more. Yeah. Uh, why here? Why, why, why would you want to stay here? What's, and, and what's the challenges of staying here too? Yeah, yeah, I probably I probably had by the time him and I got into this partnership together, um, I probably had more of those options than him. He had already kind of firmly planted his roots here by the time I came out of school and, and he had obviously raised me and Marion and things. So I had decisions to make in two thousand fourteen when I graduated from SIU and you know, that like you said, there were other options. Um, you know, there was people I met through school and internships and things that could have taken me out of this area. But one of the things I remember talking to him and Mr. Reppert about when, when I had the idea to start the Marion Star was, you know, I want to take the model, the format, the, the type of news coverage that other areas, other bigger areas normally get that Marion's not getting and bring that here to our hometown. One, because I love the people here and I know the people here and I know how to report the news here. I don't have to go make new relationships with the mayor or with the coaches or with the school districts and things, which would be hard, you know, as a Southern Illinois kid to move to a big city and have to build those new sources for, for stories and, and reporting. Um, so I already know I'm already a wildcat. I'm already a Saluki. I already kind of know the area and, and I already have, you know, my roots planted here, but, um, you know, with, with the kind of training I had with the kind of skill, um, that I could bring, um, this area just didn't have that. And I saw just a big opening and a big opportunity to give this area something that they didn't have. And, you know, and no disrespect to him because he was one of them. There was just a lot of older people that had been um, controlling the news around here, controlling the, the decisions with the newspapers around here. There hadn't been fresh blood. It just had been the same kind of group of three or four people that moved from the paper in Carbondale to the paper in Heron to the paper in Marion and back and forth for years. And there hadn't just been some fresh blood and some new ideas on not only how to make this model sustainable so more places don't close their doors, um, but just a new approach and a new energy and kind of the 21st century view on it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, kind of got an old dog to change his ways and come on board. And, <laughs> and Mr. 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 Rupert only referring to you yeah. and not me. So I appreciate that. Mr. Rupert, Although we're the same Mr. Rupert, Rupert, Rupert. Yeah. Me and anybody my age. <laughs> okay. Well, let me, and let me interject too that, uh, you know, we, we went through a, a season after we had started working together where I actually took a different job with a, a Chicago based corporation, news corporation that, yeah, he left me by myself for a year. Yeah. yeah. That, that could pay me more. And, um, and I really felt like, okay, I can kind of bring, you know, show them how to, because it's still locally based and tr show them how to get involved in the community and do things a little differently than they, than they'd done it before. And then there's just a frustration of dealing with folks who weren't, didn't seem overly interested in, in understanding um, Southern Illinois and understanding hometown, small town news and, and, um, and understanding just the, the value that this community, and this is one of the great things about Marion, is, is this community puts in being involved with each other, with collaborating with each other, with, with helping support these events that are happening downtown and other places. Um, there just was not the interest in that. It was all about the product. It was all about the, the paper. And uh, unfortunately, they were trying to do a product with, um, um, with well, one of the, the bottom dollar as well. Well, yeah, with with right, right, just very, very much an eye on the bottom dollar and and not uh, not supporting even the product as as they should. So um, I came back hat in hand, and and Riley took me back, and <laughs> and that's and that's when we officially started this one for Media right. Group. Um, yeah. At that point, I was 
left just being partners, Swinford Reppert pu Publications partners with Mr. Reppert, and then when he came back, that was kind of the last push we needed to, mm -hmm. to actually start our own, go into yeah. business for ourselves. What do you see the vision of journalism for the future, especially for small towns yeah. and, uh, and for Swinford Media Group? Yeah, I think moving forward, there's going to be more and more on the digital side. I think um, continuing to incorporate, you know, these live casts that we talked about and finding the right medium between, you know, not only monetizing that side of it, but, you know, not alienating the people that still rely on getting their paper every single week. And we have a pretty strong subscriber base as well that they want that paper in their mailbox, you know, every Thursday with their obituaries and their up and coming events and, you know, their recipes and all those kinds of things that they've came to rely on in the newspaper and their sports and all those kinds of things, but also incorporating people my age and younger and trying to reach that audience that doesn't necessarily get their news that way and maybe needs it on the phone or on social media and that kind of thing. So there's always going to be that fine line there on not alienating the audience that we already have, but trying to find new readers and, and new audience and new support and new sponsors and new advertisers and all those kinds of things as well. So I think moving forward, um, we're going to continue to see more on the digital side, um, more email blasts like what Russ mentioned, more um, kind of just coming alongside what we've already established that works and finding new ways to incorporate the technology on top of that. Yeah, and, and, and of course, obviously, we want to we want to stay in business in the, in the process, like he said. And we, uh, um, you know, one quote that I love, you and I both come out of a kind of pastoral ministry mm -hmm. background. Yeah. We, we both have have done that in, in our lives and you're still very involved in that in that world. Um, and what um, there's a there was a woman named uh, D.T. <clears throat> sorry, D.T. Miles, who she's the lady in the in the 1800s who started Vacation Bible School. She, oh, wow. That was her oh. idea. She was an educator, started Vacation Bible School, and she was talking about evangelism. So, talking about Christian evangelism, she said, "Evangelism is all evangelism is is one beggar showing another beggar where to find bread." Mm -hmm. Okay, and to me, that kind of translates into the collaborative business world that we're in. We. Mm -hmm. We, I want to be a part of an environment where it's not cutthroat. We're not trying to put you out of business and take all the bread. We're not a beggar trying to beat up another beggar and, beggar and take their bread. We want you to have bread. We want us to have bread. We want to help somebody else find bread. Mm -hmm. And we kind of do that in a couple of different ways. One, just by sharing information mm -hmm. to the community and, and showing folks what's going on and the opportunities that are there. And that's actually worked. We've had some, we've had some folks as, as we, have, as I know you've talked to, um, the black diamond folks mm -hmm. and, and others that are doing some amazing things in this community, the founders, others that are doing amazing things mm -hmm. in this community. As you know, we can share those stories and, and they've even told us that the, some of the information that we share with them is helpful and, and what they're trying to accomplish. And there's just that spirit among yeah. those guys that, and ladies that, that is, that is so, um, so much that we want to be connected to. So we're, we're doing that, we're sharing that information, but also at the same time, we see others coming to us and, and sh you know, helping us to find, find the, the bread that we need to, to be able to stay in business and to yeah. support, support what we're doing. Some of our advertisers see the value of placing their ad in our papers or on our messages for their business, mm -hmm. and we want to continue to be that. Others see the value of just attaching their brand to what we do and they yeah. want to support us they want to support hometown news but they also want to be a part of just this whole collaborative atmosphere and maybe they're not located downtown they're not lucky enough like us to, to have a location right here on the square in the middle of everything yeah. or they're not in the middle of some of the other development happening but they want to be a part of it and yeah. one of the ways they can do that is just attaching themselves to to some of this information that we're, we're putting out yeah well i think you guys are very core to that element of community connection that we have here in marion carterville mm -hmm. and heron i think in larger cities uh, the businesses and corporations they they work harder trying to make connections in their community yeah. but here there's little separation between a small business a larger corporation a large church a small church right. a large nonprofit a small nonprofit there's a closer connection there that I think we see in these communities yeah. here Marion Carterville yeah. and Heron but you guys are very much at the center of all of that 
kind of the glue, if you will, or maybe the oil that keeps it keeps it running. We Absolutely, so. the oil. So. Yeah, we uh, kind of were kind of ahead of the trend, I guess, when we have our got our office over here five years ago. We moved to the square in 2015, or I guess seven years mm-hmm. ago. Um, before it was popular to locate on the square, before it was popular to move business back to the downtown. And that was important to us from the start because some of these other corporations that he mentioned that we've worked with, they were closing offices and just like didn't see the value. They wanted all of the communities to operate out of one central because that's how it works in bigger cities. You have one skyscraper that you know handles the office for for all these different areas and they didn't see the value of the community paper being located in that community yeah. and so we uh, got in at the ground level over here before business and life started coming back to the square and yeah. and the revitalize revitalization that's been happening down here um we've been you guys blessed are very to, good at sorry to cut you <laughs> off but you're just very very good at jumping into what's what you see happening. A yeah. um, couple examples is the leadership conference that I do uh, has been called Live to Lead, and yeah. it happens around the world, but we bring it here to this community. You guys were jumped on board and said, well, how can we help promote this event? Yeah. And then Mary United, too. Yeah. And yeah. so small business owners, you know, Josh and Jared over here at Crown Brew would start as a faith-based yeah. you know, business. And at the beginning of the, we didn't know it was the beginning of the pandemic, but at the beginning, of the pandemic, they were like, how can we support these small businesses that are having to close and shutter their businesses? And you guys were on board for an online fundraising yeah, event. Yeah. And I don't know if how many newspapers or how many media groups are like, okay, we want to be up front. We actually want to be in the room right. helping you put this on. Right, right. You know, I, think, we're, we're, I think we beg at other places, we beg media groups to come. Yeah, yeah. We, we, ne- we never regret being involved in those things. Yeah. Luke, we worked with Luke in doing the empty concert series when, that, when, when Josh got that going over at the Civic Center and presenting these virtual concerts out to the, out to the community. And, and um, you know, we, just, we weren't really asking for anything other than just to be involved. And yeah. I, it, it, it obviously did a lot of good for the goodwill that, that, that we, uh, we have in the community to, to be involved in those things. I think it works for all of us when we are working together on yeah. that. But obviously, that's not the reason we're doing it. The reason we're doing it is because we see the value in it. We want to yeah. support it. When you, think, when you talk about the collaborativeness of this downtown, out here, if you look out this window out here, there are dumpsters around this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we've got, Lots of dumpsters. Best right place is the park. We've got <laughs> two of them in our corner. Two huge yeah. dumpsters that are taking yeah. two to three um, of, the, of the most valuable parking spaces we have out in front sure. of our office, and we not just us, but the two or three businesses around us. We haven't had a single conversation with anybody arguing about parking spaces, yeah. or arguing about these dumpsters, or arguing about. Um, where people can park and, mm-hmm. and, and how it works. It's just, everybody just is, deals with it, works mm-hmm. with it, knows that it's, it's, it's creating something of value and we're going we're gonna to put up with it as long yeah. as we need to. It's progress, yeah. It's yeah. progress, yeah. yeah. I do want to ask you specifically about owning your own business because we haven't really touched on that yet. Uh, I know a lot of journalists are freelancers and you, so yeah. you have a little bit of a quasi understanding oh. of how working for yourself is to begin with, but you've also worked for, well, at least you have worked worked for other businesses. Is there a really big difference or what was that transition like to own your own uh, media group versus working for somebody else? Was there, was there anything that really um, made a, a big difference for you guys in owning your own business and be, versus working for another group right and, and and I would say I would say this first of all anybody that is sitting out there working for somebody else and just looks at looks at their boss behind the you know behind the door wondering what are they doing in there all day we're the one out here <laughs> producing this or making this happen there's a lot going on behind that door mm-hmm. and and the financial side of it is something that that I wasn't prepared for mm-hmm. going in. I, I'm the son of a certified public accountant, and I was not ready <laughs> for what this would would bring. But thankfully, and this is something I want to talk about ethos for a second here too, because this is something that is so valuable to a startup. Mm-hmm. Is to have in my case, I have a brother who's still in that business in the accounting business. Mm-hmm. So I, I had somebody that I could turn to who gives me free help 
to uh, to to older brother, older brother. Yes. Yeah, he still gave it to you as he was. Mm, yeah, you know right, what I mean. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> he let you as know. an older brother, yeah, <laughs> he let me know all that I didn't know. Yeah, it's been, my whole, it's been my whole life. But but uh, but at the same time, he was giving me his that's services right. and and uh, helping me correct some of the early mistakes that I make. He's still still doing that. And uh, helping us to right the ship, and and uh, and making sure that we're okay in that area, and and also the so when I speak of ethos, I think of uh, you know the support that you can give to small businesses in those kind of areas, providing experts to, hey, have you thought of this? Have you done this? Have you filed that? Have you done, you know all yeah. of these mm-hmm. t- types of steps? It's such a value to to a startup, um, and we were really you know at at, at fifty uh, however old I was mm-hmm. fifty three years old. It was a startup. It was a, it was a new thing for me to to jump into this um, uh, for the first time. So uh, yeah, you make mistakes, you you figure it out, but um, again, it's that it's that small town. Um, you know, environment where people are, you can, you know, you feel free, you can just ask, you can ask, I've got attorney friends that I ask questions and they don't say, you know, come see me and I'll send you a bill. They, they just, you know, they, they offer, offer help. They offer some, some counsel and, and, um, and so, yeah, but it is a, it is a, it is a, it is a step to, to, mm-hmm. to go into the, into that world and, and you're going to make mistakes and you're going to feel like you're, a little overwhelmed, you're going to feel behind the eight ball, and you're going to wonder how are we going to make this work, especially in a field that is a challenge. And our mm-hmm. field is very much a, a challenge to navigate and figure out how do we turn this into something that's going to, as a as a father, is going to last, you know, last for my son and mm-hmm. and the years that he wants to be doing this. And probably, I tell I tell him all the time, you're probably going to hopefully have me next to you for years and years and years, <laughs> years, years, years to years to come because this, this business will always mean a lot to me yeah. and, uh, and I want to, want to make it strong for him. Yeah, and like for me, um, coming out of school, I had had a taste working at the SIU paper, um, the Daily Egyptian, on campus there and then I worked full time for a very short time with him at the other corporation. So I got a taste of what that could be like to be in the news cycle under someone else's management. And just the the freedoms and the flexibility to not only control my own schedule, but to cover the things that were important to me at my schedule, at my pace, um, was the most important thing for me that I decided I wanted to be in business for myself on instead of, you know, being low on the totem pole, getting the stories that no one else wanted to cover instead of having to pay my dues and work my way up. I kind of got to get right in and, and get, you know, all the experiences right from the start. And we have a you know a great team of people that work with us as well. So the ability to, like he said, be the editor and general manager and kind of assign and dictate and, and delegate and that kind of thing, um, that was the the motivation for me uh, coming out of school, for sure. I I have to ask what so if you have and I'm going to rearrange this question a little bit to meet the the journalism side. If you were to give advice to somebody that's in another small town far away that says, you know what, I want to, I want to break away from these nationally syndicated mm-hmm. uh, uh, groups and that are really consolidated and I want to start my own media group for my own hometown. What advice would you give to them? What would, what would that be for you? Uh, from you to another person that's kind of in your same situation that are that wants to support their own small town but um, has always worked for another corporation. Let me to go with that one. Is that yeah. <laughs> any yeah. advice? Um, my advice would be: I mean, first of all, it's hard to find a hometown as supportive as Marion. Um, so make sure you've got people in your hometown that are going to get as excited as Marion got behind us. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. If you can get some people, not only business partners, but just readers and people excited that will, you know, not only support you financially, but, you know, with advice and like he was saying, just emotional support and and helping you build from the ground up. And if there's just a real interest there in what you do, people will share your content. People will get the word out, follow your Facebook page, follow your social media. And then you can realize if you're onto something at that point and if it's something that you can continue to you know pursue and, and, and turn into a to a career. If if your town, you know, doesn't have a lot of, of community spirit and a lot of town pride, it's probably gonna be kinda hard to get to get that project off the ground if, if there's not a lot of, you know, 
community pride and that wants to support what you're doing and, and get behind the kinds of projects that you're trying to cover, people really don't care what's ha happening in their town if there's not a lot happening in, in their hometown. If their hometown is maybe going the opposite direction where it's you know seeing people move or businesses are shuttering and that kind of thing, it would be a lot harder than what we've had here in Marion. The beauty that we've had right around the time that we got started in you know 2014 with the Marion Star, there's just been stuff happening consistently that's easy to fill our pages mm -hmm. week after week because there's ribbon cuttings week after week. There's announcements of new restaurants coming to town. There's new distribution centers that are going to be opening. Um, so it's not a struggle every week when we sit down to try to fill the paper like, man, nothing's happening. What do we do? I mean, it's just so easy that sometimes we don't have enough space. So yeah. Yeah. finding a community, finding a town that there's really that energy and that just growth and, and synergy behind what you're trying to do would, would make your job a hundred times easier. Yeah, and I'm not going to disagree with that, um, but I, I I would add that we do have publications in other communities, and each of them is kind of at their own pace, their own stages. Mm -hmm. And and one of the things that I would encourage somebody to do is, is um, you know, rather than going in thinking, I'm going to build this this media empire and everybody's going to be under my thumb and I'm going to control, <laughs> control the press in this, in this town. Instead, focus on people. I mean, mm -hmm. pe there will always be, no matter how much energy or progress is being made in your community, there are always stories that need to be told. Mm -hmm. And you will find, you may have to, that's the thing about journalists, and it's, it's a barrier we all overcome. We're all just a little bit, um, we're very comfortable doing this, mm -hmm. right? And the first step for a reporter is being able to go out and, and talk to somebody and interview them and, and grab somebody on the go and, and, and talk to them. So that's the first thing you have to overcome. Mm -hmm. Then you have to, if you're going to go into business for yourself, you have to be comfortable in front of the Rotary Clubs and the Lions Clubs and the folks that that uh, have the business leaders there that are going to, as soon as you start talking about, what are some of the stories that we're not telling about about some some great people in this community? And that's, Riley's gotten to the point where we have just a rotation of some of these fantastic folks in the community that that are, are made stars in the Marion star mm -hmm. um, and they and it's long overdue for them they they are they are celebrated in, in what we do celebrate the people celebrate the stories dig back if, if the town's not rocking right now dig mm -hmm. back to when it was tell those stories people yeah. love the history side yeah. of what we yeah. do as well you'll find the support mm -hmm. for that but don't um, don't come in with an agenda to to um, turn the turn the city hall upside down or something mm -hmm. like that. Come in, come yeah. in, uh, t talk about people, talk about stories, build that respect, that support, and then, yeah. you'll, then you'll start to get the access that you need to do the other yeah. kinds of journalism. You That's want right. To do. But there are th good things happening in our communities yeah. around yeah. here. And so my last question follows that one. I, we're all good at speculation we, in Marion and Carterville and here, and we like to say, you know, what's going to come next? Right. You know, is it Cracker Barrel or is it, the, <laughs> you know, the Olive Garden? We're looking for the Olive Garden for the last... 40, 40 years, 40 years. Mm -hmm. 40 and years then Chick-fil-A and all that kind of stuff yeah. too. So you don't have to break any inter big news here on this podcast, but right. what would you two personally would like to see happen here in these communities? What would you like to see coming? Well, we, we already have a vision, you mm -hmm. know, that we see for that. Um, we haven't even mentioned my son, Sam, who um, is another a young person who mm -hmm. decided to, to do what he does right here. And he's actually offices next to us on the yeah. square. Now his business is called athlete. And perhaps you'll talk to him in the future, mm -hmm. but um, he's in the sports tourism business. Okay. This community has such a an opportunity in the sports tourism world, mm -hmm. and the sports tourism world, some people are just starting to understand, has become such a booming uh, business. And um, with with what the development that's happening uh, out on the other side of the interstate, and and um, and even to some extent in other parts of the town. There is, there's going to be an opportunity to just grow and grow and grow the tourism in this in this community. And so I'm I am all about um, I'm all about that and the and the things that that are happening. It's it seems to be exactly exactly on the right track. Mm. At the same time, as that is happening and growing, and we have folks coming through, we as a community have to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of that has, has happened as well. And Allison was involved in getting these great murals, and Luke was involved in getting these great murals downtown. There just needs to be more and more of that reach to, to bring folks deeper into the community. Mm -hmm. Look around here. 
hey, this is a place I want a vacation. This is a place I want to want to live. Mm -hmm. Um, that's ex that's exactly happening too. But there's just there, the rest of us, the rest of us that are in business, need to need to expand our mindset to that as well. Not just what can we open to mm -hmm. to take advantage of it, but what can we do to make sure that our community is a welcoming community, that our community is a, a, a warm place for folks to walk into, and and looking after like I know the mayor is very interested in doing, looking after some of these neighborhoods and things that need a facelift or, or need some support. Mm -hmm. um, and, and not being so um, wrapped up in even even the um, aesthetics that we forget about, again, the, the people and, and supporting the people. Because it's one thing to, to look good, but the spirit of the community is going to come from the people. Mm -hmm. And making sure that, that we are looking after that, that people are being heard. I think a lot of that is happening. I think more and more people are seeing the value in that. And uh, again, it's, it's, it's where we feel like we're in a good place to help communicate that back and forth. We don't, one of the, one of the um, issues that happen when a lot starts happening is people here, they bought this, this, this is getting transformed, this is happening, but there's a process. And we're all going to be in this process for a few years now mm -hmm. of getting from where we are to where we could be and, and will be. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of time there where people could start to go, well, is anything ever going to happen? Is anything ever going to mm -hmm. get done? Is, 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 are they really even just going to just let that thing sit there because from the outside sometimes you just can't see right. what's happening on the inside so we've got to get inside and show the progress being made and the things being done to keep the morale up yeah that's good yeah, yeah. that's a good message too. yeah very well said i have one last question have you ever considered moonlighting for radio I could listen to your voice all day, Bill. I think it's very well, part soothing. Of it, part of it is because of this cold that I have. Sometimes I'm a little higher, but I can kick, I can kick in this yeah. uh, this voice when I need to. Yeah. I've, I've always you. thought Thank that. You. I really don't think it's the Thank cold. You. I've always thought that you have a very soothing, mm -hmm. deep you. voice, and I, I think that it's it would be great for radio in addition to, uh, <laughs> to yeah. journalism. Thank well, that's a wrap. <laughs> we appreciate you guys being part of our podcast. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Bill and Raleigh yeah. Swinford, Swinford Media Group here in downtown Marion, Illinois. Thank you so much. What is the best way for everybody to get a hold of you? We have a website, swinfordpublications.com, and there's a contact form on there as well. And then we also have Facebook pages for these three, uh, Marion Star, Carnival Courier, Heron Independent. Check us out on there. Or uh, our office is 997-STAR, so that's really easy to call. 997 Awesome. Yep. Shout out to our neighbors in Carterville and Heron. They both are our neighbor, neighboring communities, and yeah. they have a lot of really great things going on with them as well. Absolutely. So that you guys get, do a great job keeping up with. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks to those that joined our small town big business community by listening or watching our podcast that we drop every other week. Thank you to our sponsors again, including Swinford Media Group, but also Fowler Hitting and Cooling, Arcadia Wealth Group, uh, Black Diamond, Harley Davidson, and RV, the Watermark Auto Group, and of course Union Street Arts. And thank you to Luke O'Neill. We've mentioned him a couple of times. We'll mention him one more time. Uh, Union Street Arts from being our producer of this podcast. And remember, you can subscribe to our podcast that is on anywhere that you listen to podcasts, including our YouTube channel and Facebook. And remember, it's subscribing is free, and that will give you a notification when the Small Town Big Business Podcast is released every two weeks. I'm your host, Allison Hassler. Thank you for listening. And I'm Russell Williams. Thanks for joining us.